Mindful Mini Makers, welcome to Mindful Mini Makes. It's officially week one of our six week club, where you'll be making beautiful pieces of art to send to your brush friend. Don't worry if you missed our introductory video on what a brush friend is and how you can get involved in our creative community project just follow the link on screen below to watch the video and find out how. Who here has ever felt a little bit down in the dumps about perhaps not being good at something or perhaps that naughty monkey inside your brain is telling you that you're rubbish at something and that you can't do that? Me? That's happened to me lots of times. Well, guess what? We all have these thoughts and feelings, but they're simply not true. Everyone has things that they're not good at and things that perhaps they struggle with. That doesn't mean that you should give up and not even give something a try. Think about the things that make you happy. Now, it doesn't have to be something that you consider yourself to be good at. It could be something that you just really enjoy doing. For example, I absolutely love art. Duh. And I especially love getting messy with a paintbrush, as you can see, even if the picture at the end, I think, doesn't look that great. But it makes me happy. That's the most important thing. So let's find out what Mindful Mini Make we're going to do this week. This week, our Mindful Mini Make is inspired by the artist Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso was a Spanish artist who painted art that spanned across many different art movements in his lifetime. He loved to experiment with colour and shape and new exciting ideas. One of his most famous periods was his Cubist artwork. Cubism is when an artist paints their subject from different angles, all in the same picture. For instance, you can see in this painting of the weeping woman, Picasso has painted her eyes facing forwards, but the bottom half of her face is in profile, a side view. This painting is trying to reflect the woman's sadness. Well, today we're going to embrace all things that make us happy. So let's find out what we're going to make. I want you to have a little think of two or three or maybe four things that make you happy. One could be something you enjoy doing. And remember, you don't have to consider yourself good at that thing. And the other could be a person, a pet, a place or a thing that makes you happy. We're going to create our very own paper collage self-portrait photographs. Goodness, that's a mouthful. And we're going to make it look a little bit like an old fashioned printed photograph called a Polaroid. So here, this is my Polaroid. This is me here in my art studio with my cat Percy, painting and getting messy. And because I enjoy sweeties so much, my paintbrush has actually got sweets on the end of it. So have a little think about what you could do for your collage. You can use pictures from magazines, 
things you've printed out or postcards, anything you like to create your collage. Then once you've finished your Polaroid self-portrait, you're going to pop it inside an envelope with your brush friend letter. The letter can be downloaded from my website or you can just simply copy it from my website. Pop it in there and it will tell your brush friend all about what's going on with this project. Anyway, let's get mindfully crafty. First, we need to create your Polaroid frame. Taking a piece of A4 plain card or paper, fold it in half to make it A5. Open it out and then with a pair of scissors cut along the crease and just keep one half. We're going to start with the background image of our photograph. Choose an image that represents somewhere that makes you happy, like your garden or somewhere you went on holiday. I've chosen an art studio. Now with a ruler and a pencil you're going to mark out a 13 centimetre by 13 centimetre square. Don't worry too much if it's not exact. It just needs to look a bit like a square and it needs to fit on your background piece of card. Get an adult to help you if you struggle with measuring. Once you've marked out all of your corners, use your ruler to join up the dots. And then with a pair of scissors, cut out your square. Now have your A5 piece of card or paper that you've just cut out to hand and some glue. You're going to stick your square onto your piece of card or paper. Can you see I've put it towards the top of my paper with a small border around it and then a big border at the bottom. This is so we can create our Polaroid picture effect. Pop on some glue onto the back of your square and then stick it in place. Once your background square is stuck in place, spin your paper round sideways. We're now going to trim off some of the bottom of our Polaroid frame. With your ruler again, mark out four centimetres from the bottom, or if you're looking at it like this, the right hand side of your square. 
join your marks up with a line with your ruler and then using your scissors cut along the line to trim off some of the excess. Don't worry again if it's not completely straight. Now we can start adding some detail. So hopefully you'd have thought about some pictures that you can get from your magazines or postcards or leaflets of pictures that may represent you. So here I've got a picture of a woman with blonde hair because I've got blonde hair. I'm going to cut out her hair. I don't want her face and I don't want her body. So I'm just going to cut round roughly around the outline of her hair. And there we have it. We have my hair shape. Now we need to start thinking about my face. I found a really cool image for this. I'm constantly getting paint everywhere, including all over my face. I found this image of a lady with paint all over her face, so I decided to use it. After selecting a section that I thought would be perfect for my face, I drew on there an inflated semicircle, or you could say a circle with a bit chopped off the bottom. Remember, we're creating an abstract cubist painting, so we don't need it to be a perfect face shape. Next, I selected a little bit for a neck, and I drew a rectangle with curved edges. Remember, you could choose any shapes you like. I just decided to go for these shapes, but you could have a triangular head or a hexagonal head, anything you like. Now, just take your hair and lay it over the top and check that it lines up. Can you see that my face sits behind the hair without really seeing too much of the skin? And my neck fits in perfectly. Now you've got the size and the shape of your head, you can decide on what eyes, nose and mouth you're going to put on there. I found some eyes that I thought worked perfectly. I'm always pulling silly faces, so these eyes that are too big for this head looked great and a little bit silly. So that was perfect for my picture. Next, I found some lips that I cut out of a magazine as well for my mouth. Finally, I chose something different for my nose, a light bulb to represent all the crazy ideas I'm constantly coming up with. Can you see a bit like Picasso's portraits? Nothing quite fits together. The eyes, the mouth, the hair, everything is facing in different directions. Next, we need to create a shape for the body. So choosing whatever you like, I chose this nice patterned piece of card. Draw a bigger and wider semicircle than you drew for the head and cut it out. Place it under the neck and check you're happy with the size and shape. We now need to just double check that the size of our picture works on our background image. So start arranging each of your little bits of paper onto your background and see if you like it. If there are bits that you're unhappy with, just simply change them for something else. Now, I could just leave it like this because it looks quite cool as it is. But I decided I wanted to add a few more little bits that summed up my personality and things that make me happy. So one of the first things I decided to do was add a picture of a cat. Because I have a very naughty little cat called Percy and he follows me everywhere, including in the art studio. 
getting paint all over his paws and then walking it all round my house. What a monkey! So I add my little Percy cat to my picture next to me because he makes me happy. Next I wanted to add a few more little details. So taking the same patterned card that I used for my body, I'm going to create an arm shape. Again, don't worry too much about it looking like an arm. As you can see here, I've just created something that looks a little bit like an arm. Once you've drawn it, cut it out. Next, to create a little hand to hold my paintbrush. Using the same piece from a magazine that I used before, I just cut out a rough circular shape for my hand. Finally, the last thing to add in was my paintbrush. I chose a really cool image of a paintbrush and the paintbrush's bristles were made of sweeties. I absolutely love sweeties and I absolutely love painting. So this had to go in my picture. Once you're happy you've added everything you want, it's time to glue it down. Now this is a little bit tricky because you're going to have to lift some of it off to be able to glue it down. You will have to take off some of the bits of your picture to be able to start sticking down. I suggest, if you think you're worried that you might forget what your picture is going to look like, take a photograph on a phone so you can refer back to it. Now, starting with the body, glue it in place with a little bit of glue. Don't push it down too hard though because we're going to have to tuck other bits underneath such as the arm and the neck. So the next thing I'm going to glue is my neck. Can you see I've tucked it behind the body shape. Then the arm and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Put some glue on the back of the arm shape and then position it where I want it, tucking it behind the body shape. Repeat the same thing for every little bit that you're going to stick down until your picture is complete. Some bits, like my paintbrush and my Percy cat, I decided to have so they actually sat outside the square bit of the photograph, almost like they're jumping out of the image and coming to life. And there we have it. It's now just ready to add your message. So the last bit we need to do before our picture is complete is just add our personal message. I decided I just wanted to introduce who I was. So I wrote a little message saying who I am and a couple of things that I really like. And there you have it, your abstract Polaroid. 
ready to send off to your brush friend.